The volatile scenario in Bangladesh post the ousting of the Sheikh Hasina government has put the focus on what should be India's immediate and long-term response to the current situation. Amidst this, the Society to Harmonize Aspirations for Responsible Engagement or SHARE, a think tank which, has, which was established recently to cater to the concerns of the Northeast, has made some recommendations on policy options for India in dealing with the current Bangladesh situation, considering the Northeast perspective. Share executive committee members, which include former GOC in C Eastern Command, Lieutenant General Retired R.P. Kolita, former Assam DGP and current State Chief Information Commissioner Bhaskar Jyoti Mohanta, veteran journalist and academic Dr. Samudra Gupta Kashyap and cyber security expert Subimal Bhattacharya spoke on the issue during a seminar in Guwahati today. The think tank observed that India-Bangladesh ties have witnessed several complexities over the years, especially owing to shifting political dynamics in Bangladesh. Over the past decade or so, the bilateral relations between the nations has proven to be one of the strongest and these developments have benefited India's Northeast the most. Hence, the current political instability in Bangladesh has direct repercussions for the Northeast. The panel observed that there are four key conundrums in the Indo-Bangla relationship. Firstly, there is the short-term issue of Sheikh Hasina's long-term presence in India. While it is important to protect our friends, not irking the new political authority in Dhaka is important as well, think tank Share observed. Secondly, Sher also observed that while Dhaka may not be keen on discussing security matters, it is important to note that development cannot be achieved without security. Furthermore, connectivity is a key pillar of the Indo-Bangla engagements. The vast spectrum of road, rail, in inland water or even air connectivity projects that the two nations have embarked upon are a testament to this. However, such connectivity also exposes India's Northeast to potential security concerns as these portals may be misused by anti-India elements to enter the region and wreak havoc. The share noted that historically anti-India forces have used Bangladesh as a launchpad to destabilize the northeastern states of India. The share report also added that while India would want to pursue a national policy, in reality, the relevance of India's Northeast in the context of Bangladesh remains disproportionately high. This is especially true when one considers how anti-India policies in Bangladesh has an almost exclusive impact on India's Northeast. Thus, New Delhi has to factor the voices emanating out of its northeastern states while formulating its policy towards Dhaka. The SHARE report also recommends that India should form a nuanced perspective of Bangladesh's political landscape. It recommended that India should address the aspirations of the youth in Bangladesh. The SHARE report highlighted some disturbing developments in Bangladesh since August 5th. For instance, on the 6th of August, an armed mob attacked the high-security prison in Sherpur, freeing more than 500 inmates, while another jailbreak was orchestrated in Ghazipur, resulting in the escape of 209 prisoners. Among those who escaped was the India Amir of Ansarullah Bangla team, Ikramul Haq, who was arrested in Dhaka back in 2023 based on intelligence inputs from Indian agencies. The SHARE report said, that this is an exceptionally alarming situation, especially for Assam and Tripura, where several modules of the ABT and JMB have been busted in recent times. Speaking exclusively to Northeast Live, SHARE member and former Assam DGP Bhaskar Jyoti Mahanto highlighted the role of SHARE and its purpose. The society to harmonize aspirations for responsible engagement it's a think tank that has been started in Assam uh, and basically to forge unity among the Northeastern people and uh, be a combined uh, strength to be impressing upon the policymakers on various issues which have impact the Northeasterners in general. And when I talk about Northeast, I also talk about people from Sikkim. So there are a lot of issues, you know, which impact uh, the Northeast in general, especially with reference to South Asia in general and Southeast Asia in particular. We have so much of similarities. We want to explore the commonalities, the likeness 
through which we can forge a better kind of a unity among ourselves, which should impact in a better trade environment, connectivity environment, and better relation with each other, people-to-people -people contact, cultural exchanges, etc. And also in the educational fields, we need to do a lot of work on research, on area studies. So we have got verticals, uh, and we have very important people with us, uh, with tremendous amount of experience in Northeast India, uh, and also in the international sphere. So they are contributing a great deal. And we have also representatives helping us from different parts of the Northeast India itself. Uh, so I'm sure we are going forward. And today we had this paper presentation, for uh, uh, which is a policy recommendation to government of India, uh, a Northeast perspective in respect of the conundrum in Bangladesh, the crisis that is happening in Bangladesh. And we had distributed our policy recommendations paper to everybody who was here, and very good quality of people who from different parts of Northeast were present today. And uh, they gave us suggestions as to how to go about uh, in uh, respect of the recommendations that we have made. I'm sure together we can uh, move ahead for a better Northeast and better world tomorrow. And share member and former GOC Eastern Command, Lieutenant General R.P. Kolita, speaking exclusively to Northeast Live, stressed on the need for extensive engagement with Bangladesh. What we have to understand is uh, whatever has happened in Bangladesh, uh, there is a regime change which has taken place, which was preceded and followed by also a lot of violent activities, uh, wherein uh, minorities were targeted and the Awamili cadres were also targeted. And the students were also targeted by the police in the initial stage. So there has been losses by the both sides. And the instability in Bangladesh or violent activities in Bangladesh have impact in India as, and in particular in Northeast India because we share a huge boundary with Bangladesh. And we have historical ties, we have uh, cultural ties, the languages are same on both sides, we have people are same on both sides. So any sort of development in Bangladesh would have an impact on India and vice versa, both are true. So now whatever has happened has happened, now what should India do? Uh, because uh, uh, we cannot have instability in a neighborhood, we cannot have a, really a neighbor who is unfriendly to us, uh, you know, uh, where there are anti-India feelings which are, be, uh, which are being propagated now. So how do we address this problem? How do we go from, where do we go from here? Because till recently, we had an excellent bilateral relationship with Bangladesh. So we have made our recommendations. There are certain steps, short-term, mid-term and long-term recommendations which we have made. The main point is we need to continue to engage Bangladesh, including the present regime. And all the stakeholders which are there in Bangladesh need to be engaged at different level. We also need to promote people-to-people -people contact businesses, trades, which, are, which has been existing traditionally. Uh, we need to promote all these activities so that there are the mutual understanding between the people of both the countries improve. And Northeast Live Editor-in-Chief Vosmir Hussain stressed on the factors India needs to consider before formulating policies. And Mohammed Yunus, okay, he is a Nobel laureate, highly respected. There were 100 cases uh, filed against him by Sikha Sina regime. He had to be in Paris, he came back. The students wanted it. But you must also understand that he is absolutely pro-US and uh, Khalida of course is pro -U, both pro-US and pro-China. So these are the people now India will have to work with. So India has to really, really work over time. Now the questions are being asked, has India put all, her, all its eggs in one basket? That is the basket of the Army League and Sikha Sina. What kind of a relationship did we have, or do we have now, uh, with, uh, with the Bangladesh Nationalist Party? We all know what, who are the allies of the Bangladesh Nationalist Party. Uh, in this backdrop, when I say India-Bangladesh relations, I always say India North, uh, Northeast India-Bangladesh relations. When, I, when you call it India-Bangladesh relations, to me, it is Northeast India-Bangladesh relations. Because we are the people who are most greatly and heavily impacted. 4,000 kilometer long border, porous border, despite the uh, fence. So in this backdrop, I think we need to take these things into uh, consideration while formulating uh, our policies, both, uh, and most important will be the short-term policies. And I personally don't think 
that the interim government is going to last very long. And I personally think that sooner than later, we'll have to deal with the new regime, which will be a not so friendly regime in Dhaka. Thank you. And a share member and former Foreign Secretary of India, Ambassador Harshwardhan Shringla, also spoke on the share report released today. But I think what share is trying to do is to provide a perspective exclusively from the Northeast. And I think this is something that we have not seen so far. This is what makes the report quite unique. And it tends to look at the evolving situation in Bangladesh from a purely Northeastern perspective, a Northeast Indian perspective. And, and uh, I think that is very important, considering that uh, the 4,000 or kilometer boundary that we share with Bangladesh, a good part of it uh, involves the Northeast. We develop such synergies and interlinkages that irrespective of governments that come in in both Bangladesh and India, you are forced to continue at least a certain level of exchanges without which both countries would find it difficult.